Last week, three men were sentenced to a total of 36 years for their part in a grave robbery and blackmail plot. For the last year, I've been following key hardline activists to understand how the animal rights movement operates and how it thinks. We are compassionate and peaceful people. We are non-violent people who are going to achieve our aims through non-violence. One of the longest running animal rights campaigns is targeted at a farm in Staffordshire that breeds guinea pigs for scientific research. Today, Johnny Abelwhite, who runs Save the New Church Guinea Pigs, is leading the protesters to the farm. With him is Kerry Whitburn. It would turn out that these two were planning to rob a grave and blackmail the family that run the guinea pig farm. The shed's over there. Right, it over there. Yeah, little turrets. The farm is owned by the Hall family. Over 500 acts of intimidation have been reported in the course of the five-year campaign, but the grave robbery would be the most extreme. We just asked him if we can put the PA on this side. He let us last year. Talk to me. I'm the boss. Talk to me. Who are you? Hands off. Who are you? That side. Who are you? Chief Inspector Mould. OK. Can we put the PA over there? No, no why not? Both Johnny and Kerry have served prison terms for animal rights offences. At gatherings like this, others are encouraged to break the law. I go to prison, I come out. Those animals are in there, they're never coming out, and that's the difference. They want you to think, oh, I can't do it. No, I better not do that, I'll go to prison. I want to see destroyed sheds. I want to know that there's no guinea pigs in there. Go out right there and do it. Forget the fear. You're fearful. Try and get over it. Not for me, for the animals. Many activists have a real resentment of the media, but Johnny seems surprisingly relaxed with me. Oh, we, had, we always know we had to finish off at four o'clock. They always do this. There's no reason why it shouldn't be half four or five o'clock, for God's sake. It's completely arbitrary, you see. He agrees to meet me at home and let me film him on one of his regular trips to the farm. <laughs> So um, your, your film is from the very process of getting into the car? Yes. Because you're in, in, interested in trivia as well, obviously. Yes. The whole process of going to a demonstration. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. So have you lived here throughout the campaign? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Johnny doesn't completely trust me. I don't know you yet. I can't, I, those questions are far too personal. <laughs> He doesn't live there at all. He's just pretending to, for my benefit. Have I always been this tall? Yes. <laughs> See, no dilation, completely honest. <laughs> Today, a new recruit is coming with them. Yeah. This is Gemma's first visit yeah. to the farm. I'm really fanatical about animals. I love animals. Right, and I've right. got six guinea pigs of my own. Gorgeous. They're really fast as well, guinea pigs, aren't they? <laughs> Go bobbing about, oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I love it, because you're at that lovely stage, you know, if you're just starting out, and, you, and you, you've got all that joy and happiness about animals, yeah. and then you'll see some awful oh, video. No. It's far worse than you can ever imagine. It just, just goes round, I can't sleep at night, it's just I'm completely obsessed by the pain that they're going through. Especially now I've got these six guinea pigs, I look at them and think, God, they could be experimented on. This is it. This is where if you've got, if you've got the, the will, you're going to be with us. Yes. Till the end of eternity. We've got movement up there. There's movement at the farm. Here's the police. Ooh. Right on cue. And if you go further up, See the little turret, they're like the concentration camp like turret. Shame on you! 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 Shame on
premises are so rare to see a transport. They're not so f***ing arrogant generally to drive out the animals right in front of us. We routinely abuse animals as a society. I mean, why here? Why aren't you outside abattoirs? Why aren't you outside chicken farms? <laughs> why, why guinea pigs? It's not, it's life, remember. It's not just guinea pig life. <laughs> what did she say? Piss off. <laughs> because tactically it's winnable. And yeah, we might have thought it was going to be a lot quicker than it has been, but that doesn't matter. So how, how long are you prepared to do this for? Forever. Seriously? Oh, absolutely. It is a raison d'etre. There's no way you'd let those animals down. Kerry Whitburn is another of the regulars. A death camp for animals! Close it down! I went to a number of these demos. It was around this time that Johnny and Kerry must have been planning the grave robbery. Occasionally, Johnny would remove his microphone and they would go for a private chat in the woods. This is Mummy Moomin, this is Harriet. Isn't she gorgeous? Look at her. After one farm visit, Gemma takes Johnny home to meet her guinea pigs. I'm so sorry, Harriet. Oh, she's like a little teddy bear, I'm she so is. Sweet. Someone. Someone. Is this, this is someone. It's not too difficult to comprehend, is it? But when you say someone. Not something. Yeah. But it makes it sound like a person when you say that. Just being respectful of its individuality. Or her. How about that? About her individuality. A she, she is a she and a mother. Thoughts of death are never far from Johnny's mind. They'd have to grab around the back of the head. Right. And it, a flick of the wrist like that, like that, would snap the spinal cord along the back here. Right. Just down, pick another one, down, pick another one, down, like That's that. Just a mad, constant, yeah. systematic, yeah. And just a, a, an increasingly growing pile of dead yeah. animals. Yeah. Yeah. So In exactly two weeks, the grave will be robbed and Johnny will be arrested. Another major target for the animal rights movement is in Oxford. The university is trying to build an animal research lab. The activists forced Cambridge to abandon a similar project and work stopped here for 18 months after the contractors were threatened. Now work's restarted, the government is taking a stand, underwriting security costs to the tune of a reported £100 million. To protect the new builders, everything and everyone are anonymised. You're going to go round via Cross Key Street round the back. Rest you stay here. The clear determination to complete the lab has provoked anger among the activists who have been on the streets almost daily. And when you get down there, make sure they know we're here. They're led by Mel Broughton. My wife's nightmare fair came for Christmas! Go to f yourself, asshole! Don't stick it up your asshole, right? No, I won't stick it up my asshole. Go on, get out of the camera. <laughs> Do it to you, Mel. Always with Mel is his 70-year-old mother. How old are you? Today will be the first time they've faced the new builders. A key objective is to identify the new contractors. Mel and his team watch the site every day, trying to build intelligence on the security operation and the movements of the workers. Hello. 
Yeah, I'm behind it. Yeah, it's just going in. Yeah. There's the car as well. These two guys here shadow the van. This car, I don't know who they are. They shadow the van in. Steve? Yeah, that car there, the Volkswagen Golf, that's the two people who shadow the van. Oh, they are coppers then. It's interesting. The two guys in that plain car we pulled up next to just got out in front to arrest Steve. They're oh, coppers. Really? Uh, so they're using plain clothes coppers to follow the workers in and out. Okay. A veteran of the Animal Liberation Front, Mel is staying just within yeah. the law, but reluctantly. You've been in prison for two offences. Mm. What was the first one? I was arrested in Northampton in a car with incendiary devices in the boot, and I'm prepared to admit uh, that I was going to use them. Yeah. But, uh, and, you know, and I've served a prison sentence for it. Because I'm marked out, I can't do that anymore. I know I'm followed. I know I'm listened to. I, I can't do what inside me I really do want to do. This Saturday sees the first national demo of the year. Activists from all over the country have been called to Oxford. Do you, um, do you get nervous organising something like this? Yeah. yeah. I felt sick this morning. Really? Again, yeah. <laughs> Just woke up feeling really sick. What I'm hoping is, is that, unlike previous demos, uh, there'll be a, a, a much more angrier edge to it. I think undoubtedly there'll be tension. Uh, and you're saying you want it to be angry? Yeah. Mm. We're going to start the march in a minute. Um, normally at this point, you'll hear me call for a disciplined demonstration. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to call for anything except this. Anger. If there are any police officers out there who consider I'm inciting people, then let me tell you clearly, I intend to do exactly that. None of this discipline, none of this will behave ourselves, none of this will walk down there and stand there and politely hold a placard. That's over. Now it is time to fight. As they move off toward the lab, Mel's speech has set a grim tone. Shame on you! Shame on you! Stop torturing these animals! Keep your hands off them! Keep your hands off! The protesters had been given a categoric assurance by the police that they would be able to hold speeches directly outside the lab. Stopping you. Stop. 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 I don't know what they're doing. And then they put a barrier across the road there. Well, maybe they're going to let us show it on. No, it's going to be trouble if we don't. Stop. 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 What's happening? What's happening? Basically, they've gone back on their word. They said we were going to be allowed to march to the lab. They're stopping us. They lied to us. Stop the As the march turns to head back to the town centre, the police come close to losing control. Hold it here, let it settle and then see where we go from here. Okay. The demonstrators head to the town hall for a rally. Mel's nowhere to be seen, so I look for his mum. After everyone had left to come to the town hall, it became pretty apparent that they were probably going to arrest him. So we stayed with him and the police moved in and arrested him for incitement. For the hardcore, arrest and imprisonment are no deterrent. Please, can you um, follow us? Yeah, they'll follow us to the first one. Probably more, more than one sometimes, it just depends. In addition to New Church and Oxford, the movement's other major campaign is against Huntingdon Life Sciences, a large animal testing lab. Activists target the companies they believe do business with HLS. 
We're going to um, tell them what goes on at HLS, generally make them be ashamed and let their neighbours know. We hope by targeting it's going to bring their share prices down, stuff like that. Can we just give you a leaflet? The idea is to force these companies to sever their ties with HLS, but they're wrong about this place. It's got no connection with the lab. Can you not take it down? Too late. The protesters are led by Gail Record. What have you got to be scared about? We know you're a customer of HLS. That's right, go and hide like you do all the time. Put the blinds down, run upstairs and hide. Hide your shame. Preventing cures for people. Damaging people's lives. Torturing animals. You're getting blood money. Blood money. Oh, they always go up and hide, don't they? Because they're ashamed of what they work for. People are drawn into the movement for a variety of reasons. Well, we did try and talk to them and they shut the door. Gail's involvement appears to stem from medical treatment she received as a child. OK, can I just get some more stuff then? You're our target now. We found you out. Giving all of Huntington Life Sciences. I've got congenital scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine. And I had um, a spinal fusion um, when I was 10, I think. Um, you had bolts put in your head and bolts put through your ankles and you were led out on a frame and had weights at either end. And um, every other day a weight would be added to sort of correct the curvature in my spine. It didn't hold, the spine started to curve again. I lost seven inches in height. That may, makes me very angry. The fact that I'm left with a massive disfigurement. Does your wife have Botox? Does your wife have Botox? You're killing animals! Animal abuser! Go home and have a good night's sleep! I actually wanted to become a show jumper and, and do things that I now can't do purely because of um, the surgery that was carried out on me. So, yeah, I, I am. Very sorry about that. I wouldn't like to say I'm bitter. It's just wanting justice. You ought to be ashamed! Ashamed! Hi, Gail. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Come on in. Gail lives with her mother, who's also an active campaigner. Gail! Hi, David. You all right? Gail, what have you done to your hair? <laughs> They're going to a demo in Oxford and have invited me to go with them. Oh, crikey, it's really changed, isn't it? Meter. The plan today is to visit various university sites before finishing at the lab. Gail's brought her favourite banner with her. Yeah. What's, um, what's that post again? It's just got a, a monkey and a cat on it, actually. It, it, I've improvised it today because it's a, a shack one. That's changed the wording on it. Just come over here. You take that end down there. It's got a monkey on it with bolts in its head. They actually do this on people as well and it doesn't work. It only disfigures them. Can you imagine what it's like to have bolts screwed into your head? Not being able to move? Can you imagine the pain with no pain really? Animals will be illegally exported into this country for torture and for death. Death money. That's what it is. Ignorance saying no, that we don't need science. It's ignorance that you don't know what you're talking about. Have, Have you been, been in the laboratory? Yes, my brother has been treated by the drugs. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure you can live with such cruelty. I, I really am. I've read the leaflets. Have you? Yes. Well, then I suggest you read them again. Just because I'm not we persuaded do not by them. Want to live amongst murder and cruelty. Your children will have to live with this. The murder, the torture, the hate. You can't hide. Just parasites. You can't hide for much longer. How can you live with yourselves? How can you face your children? Why have you masked your faces? Why? Yeah,
Don't worry, not a second. Frightened, are you? Mummy, don't use the word frightened. Come on! When I see that picture that you carry with the monkey, I yeah. can't help thinking about what happened to you when you were in yeah. hospital. Yeah, I like that picture, yeah, because I think I can identify with the with the monkey a little bit. I feel I know, I know a little bit what I'm talking about because it's very painful. And to keep those bolts in place, they do have to tighten them once a week. And they don't, you, you, you don't have an anaesthetic or anything, you just go crunch, crunch, crunch. And you can literally hear your skull grinding and feel it grinding. I can remember time. when Gail first had it done, it, I fainted nine times before I could even look at her. When, you, when you're watching them each week with their screwdrivers, tightening up the nuts and bolts, and this is what they're going through. It must have been very traumatic. It's terrible. You've that. never ever seen anyone suffer so much. I put a screw into your head, okay? Mm. And I get a screwdriver and tighten it up every week to make it tight. And I imagine what that must feel like. Yeah. Look, she's got the holes well, in her head. Now. Look. That's what she had to go through. That's what they're having to go through. You know, I just try and look after her. But what goes around comes around every time, no matter how long you have. OK, this is the grave. There is no headstone on it because the headstone was damaged at the time of the, um, of the desecration. In New Church, the body of Gladys Hammond, the mother-in-law of one of the Hall brothers who run the guinea pig farm, is stolen and blackmail letters are sent demanding the farm close. That's also illegal. But after months of investigation, no charges are brought against Johnny Ablewhite <laughs> or Kerry Whitburn. The blackmailing continues and eventually the halls decide to close the business, hoping the body will be returned. The success of the campaign is big news, but Johnny's having trouble with the reporters. <laughs> I'm not allowing myself to be happy, they're all saying you're no, happy. Because you know where it's going. Are you ecstatic? Are you happy? <laughs> yes, I'm so happy and relieved. Well then, <laughs> what about this? What about the intimidation? Just tell you so, what, what to do now. Just get some yeah. introductory shots of you. All right, just, okay, what do I do that or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put it Cut that. Um, he just doesn't understand why the farm's closure isn't a good news story. Saying no to this incredible nonsense called vivisection. But there's only one thing the media want to talk about. Thank you very much for talking to us. The police today say that the hunt for Gladys Hammond's body does continue. Although they've also said that the, the sooner that her remains are reunited with her family, the better it will be for all concerned. Um, and will um, Gladys Hammond's remains be returned to this family? Whoever stole those remains they may think that this is the time to give those remains back, and SNGP would encourage them to do that. Thank you very much. OK. That's right. OK. Cheers. There you are. It's just absolutely destroying it for me. Why? Because all this bloody Gladys thing, they're just obsessed. And it's just like this one tiny thing. You know, I know it's this huge, significant thing, but like, you know, when you've got like the image of billions of animals stacked up, waiting in line to be culled, to test shampoo, do you know? And that's all you think about all the time. And they just bang on about everything else. It's like, can we just get some context? Yes. I feel like I'm not allowed to celebrate this. I really do. Really? Yeah, I can't, you know? Why? Because people will think that yeah, because it's but like... you then stole Gladys' yeah, body. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. There's an element to your campaign which isn't directly lawful, isn't, isn't there? Okay. Yeah, totally. I'm not even going to pretend to try and, and, and <laughs> pretend that doesn't exist. You know, I mean, this is not the time to start bandying around excuses and saying, oh, we're just peaceful protests and we stand there at 7 o'clock from 12 till 3. It's blatantly obvious that there's an element to the animal rights movement which is not tolerating this, and they're prepared to go to these lengths to do it, yeah. you know. And this is just what people have called creative extremism, you know what I mean? And it's worked. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, obviously it's yeah, successful. Man. It's successful, but obviously... <laughs> Check that. Following Sunday at the farm, 
The regulars are in fine voice. In the movement for even longer. <laughs> and Kerry is sporting a campaign medal of sorts. What's that on your arm, Kerry? That's my celebration tattoo. <laughs> What's the WRFR? WFR, we fought righteously. <laughs> That's what it means. We fought righteously, which we did. The removal of Gladys Hammond's body certainly has been used as a sort of way of applying pressure to them. I mean, the animal rights militia have Why not? sent them yeah, threats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whoever's going to claim it or whoever has done it, um, you can't get away from the fact that, yeah, it's had an effect on them and it does, if it's worked, it's worked. So it's fair to say you don't have a problem with the removal of the body? I don't, no. It's a removal of bones from a grave um, and they've obviously it's affected them. But what about the removal of guinea pig bones that I myself and another campaigner Bones spread over those woods over there once. You know, there was loads of bones. That do you, think, you think that's directly comparable, do you? Yeah, I do. Kerry goes to greet Johnny. It's the first time they've met since the closure announcement. Come on! Show him your tattoo then. Let me see. That is classic. We fought righteously. Not everybody goes to these sort of lengths. Well, you know, it's my first picture though, isn't it? Look at the kid! The whole animal rights movement comes together to celebrate. But there's some bad news for Johnny. A newspaper has unearthed his and other leading activists' previous convictions. When he's not running blackmail campaigns, Johnny is a supply teacher. It's a really bad picture of you, you look really mean. And what, what are they saying? Uh, they, were say, uh, they were saying, um, how dare he be a teacher? Do, 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 the, do the schools know that he's got, oh, what was the word? It was just something along the lines of disgusting, disgusting beliefs. It's all over. He had wanted to keep his conviction secret for fear of losing his job. Apparently you're a terrorist. Oh. And you've been going around people's houses and... They've said that? Yeah. Uh, okay. What does he say about it? <laughs> You've got it in the mail. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've got a what does it say? <laughs> it just said, how can he be allowed in the classroom and all this nonsense. They're trying to stamp on the day. I've heard other people saying, oh, you're dancing on the grave of Gladys, having a celebration day like this. <laughs> you know, it's just... Oh, my God. Demonisation tactics are just becoming phenomenal, aren't they? Johnny reads out a letter from an imprisoned activist. This is a letter from Keith Mann. In prison right now. Prison turns activists into martyrs. He says to us, you've recharged the batteries of the liberation movement across the globe. March on for justice today. Thanks, Keith. I wish we could hear Keith Mann's spells inside have made him legendary. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm currently wearing a tag which is due to come off tonight, I believe. When I hear Keith's been released from his latest sentence on an electronic tag, I go and see him at home. OK, fair enough. All right, All right thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Is that you in any, in any of those pictures? Well, I'd be a fool to admit to that, wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, just very good people, having done very good things. How's your day without your dad? The tag has confined him to his house after dark. He and his girlfriend Paula have spent much of the time watching videos. This is somebody who worked undercover inside a gang of badger baiters and exposed what they were doing. That is awful. Mm. Have you ever seen a dog fighting video? No. <laughs> That's just savagery, really, and you know. He actually puts his foot on this badger that's just bolted from the hole. 
and sinks his knife into it and stabs it so many times. Another one, they swing it round and round, don't they? Yeah. And then chuck it in the air and shoot it. Scum. I don't like to watch any more videos anymore because I've seen them all. And um, it upsets me and um, I know what happens now. Um, but when you first join, obviously, you have to, you have to watch these awful videos. People like this are dangerous and need to be controlled. And they were sent to prison for six months. You know, well, I got 18 months for taking animals out of a laboratory. Keith doesn't see himself as dangerous. I don't need to see any more of that just now. Well, I was sentenced in 1994 to 14 years in total for uh, really quite minor offences. What were the offences then? Criminal damage to the tune of £6,000. Nothing dramatic, didn't burn anything. Uh, attempted arson, attempted incitement of a material I wrote, possession of a tub of weed killer, which I was using to make material to cause fires, and escaping from custody. Right. Hey, I'm free. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> Once his tag's been cut off, Keith's ready to celebrate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fire, I've got a lot of wood there to burn. Now you can't have a fire in the garden. Watch me. No, you can't. I can't burn anywhere anymore. I've got to have a little fire. Don't chuck petrol on it or anything stupid. <laughs> now we're cooking. Do you like fire? I love a fire. <laughs> yeah. Keith's persistent offending seems almost pathological but he now says he's going to stay within the law. Do you really think your active days are over? I mean, honestly. They have to be, they have to be. I'm not in a position not to be. You're not convinced, are you? You sound like my probation officer, she said the same. She couldn't believe that that was it for me. But, uh, you know, well, take it as you will. Will I, won't I? Will he, won't he? A week later, and Keith has started his new life. We're going to visit a chicken farm, but it doesn't feel quite right. Uh. Well, we're going, to do, we're going to do the work of the authorities. We're going to go in and do some filming and pass on whatever we, evidence we get of, of law-breaking. What we're doing is perfectly illegal and above board. So why are we going at night? Um, well, we went in the day, we'd probably be attacked by workers um, and you don't have free access in the day. You can smell it now. I'm getting nervous. <sighs> Shall I wait here for you? Or... Uh... You might want to get a bit closer. I'll get a bit closer. Yeah. There's birds there. Yeah. We're going to go in this end unit and uh, take it from there. I'll see you. See you shortly. Take it. Yeah, I'll pass you the bags. And I'm a bit surprised Keith's got large bags with him. After about 20 minutes, Keith emerges and the bags look full and they're making noises. <laughs> Keith had liberated chickens he'd found underneath the battery. I mean, we've walked out with 10 birds that have been left to rot in the waste pits, but we've had to leave behind, I don't know, 5,000 5, still in the cages. So it's kind of, it's a bit of sweet victory, if you like, I suppose. Oh, it's encrusted on her beak. We're gonna have to get some water out and soak these. Keith, do you think you feel the same about the chickens being in this state as you would if it was people? <laughs> is that a serious question? Yeah, it is. Well, if I, yeah, absolutely, I mean, I don't make any distinction whatsoever. They're all individuals, whatever species they are. And I would be in there doing exactly the same if we were in Nazi Germany and these were concentration camps with people in rather than animals in. I would be, I'd be doing my utmost to get the people out of there. Well, stand. Over the months, I'd seen the same faces on the demos, but Gail Records been missing rethinking her involvement in the movement. I felt very much that everything was being done that turned people against us. Things like bombings or paint stripping, 
I felt that it wasn't, enough wasn't being done to prove to people that animal experiments aren't necessary because at the end of the day, if people think animal experiments are necessary, they're going to support them. There are animals everywhere. Gail might have been having her doubts, but her mum is as committed as ever. As far as animal rights are concerned, I think it's all being done the wrong way. I think they should have blown HLS up and places like that years ago. I would blow that place up myself. So if I'm ever dying of a fatal disease, I will get in there and that is my one aim in life. When I know. suicide bomb, it? Was... Suicide bomb, yeah, and I would do it. But what, what you were saying to me, Gail, yeah. about your feelings about the animal rights movement, I mean, it's sort of, it's kind of the opposite of what your mum thinks, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, my mum's always talking about uh, doing the violent way, going in there and blowing everybody up and doing it like that. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see certain people dead or blown up, but um, it, it would still be classed as murder and terrorism and it might, it might could go against it in the long run, I don't know. I went to hospital three years ago because they found something. And uh, I had to wait two weeks for the results, whether it was benign or malignant. But I planned it. I planned it in my mind. I'd started planning everything. If I you know, was going to die of terminal cancer, this is the way I'm going to go. Kids know that's what I'm going to do. I'll blow that place from here to kingdom come and everybody in it. Would you? Yes. And I think anybody that works there deserves what they get. And I'm more than happy. And I would. And that is the truth. Oh, good boy! What a treasure! We use this because it's wet. Right. Good boy! Bizarrely, Gail's favourite dog has suffered a spinal injury. Come on, come on, little man. Come on, then. Come on, then. Come on, Go on. Come on, boy. Having looked after Gail for so many years, um, then to have her dog the same is strange. You know, they gave us no hope with Gail, but we did it, we made it. He's just a little baby, look at him. A lot of your life is built around caring and compassion. I suppose I'm having a bit of trouble reconciling that with the other your, side. your desire to, to kill yeah. lots of people. My only desire to kill is those that have hurt in my mind, and I can go to bed thinking of this and I can feel it irritating my head, all those animals that are suffering. And you can feel them? Yeah. They're a sort of presence in your yes. mind, are they? Yes, yeah, I can. And then I'll turn over and yeah, I think, try I think not think about it. I think everybody can. And every night, you do go to bed and you do think about mm. those animals in cages, dying on the floor, mm. vomiting up their own blood, um, stuff like that. And uh, it sort of lives with you. And the more you're into animal rights, the more it preys in your mind, the more it can mess your mind up. Look into the eyes of the monkey! And it's despair! Clint, a regular at Oxford, is deeply into animal rights. Look at the monkeys this square, Mr. Builder! The stock pictures he carries reinforce his anger. Can you see your despair, officer? I can see it. I see it every day. I see it in my nightmares. As you can see, the, the monkey's in total despair. Right. Uh, total dread of the uh, lab technician coming to, coming to the cage and just taking him away and to be tested on again. This dog here on the bottom, yeah. you can see looking out as if, please help me. Please somebody take me away from this hell, this hell on earth. Because that's what it is for animals in laboratories, it's hell on earth. And I'm, I'm getting angry now looking at the photograph. Yeah, I can see. I'm getting really angry about it now. When you're not looking at these pictures, is it still something that that you think about? Of course, it's, it's in my head 24 hours a day. Is it? And what's that like? I mean... It's quite hard actually. It's quite, it's quite hard to, to control your thoughts about it. Mel Broughton, the leader of the protests, was never charged with incitement after the big demo. But his need to keep fighting makes him look to me like he's tormented. Oh yeah, is anything happening down there? I want yeah. to understand what's troubling him. I don't think anyone is thinking, you know, we can't win here, no. we can't stop this. All they're thinking is, is that... 
No, they don't. It's just been hanging around for a few days. Was that a wasp? Yeah. You're not going to put it out? No, it's too cold. It's obviously been in here. Keep out the cold, so, so it's been here a few days. So you're looking after that wasp now? Yeah, I'm helping it, yeah. Right. So is what society does to animals, it's just, is it a constant presence in your head? Mm. Well, yeah, because if you think about, you know, I'll pass cattle trucks with cattle on the way to the slaughterhouse, which I've done many times. I walk down the road and got to pass a butcher shop. Um, there's no getting away at the moment. You, you just, it's there, it's everywhere I go. You know, it's, um, it's a constant reminder. It's a constant thing to deal with. It's just all there in your head. It's just all there. You, the only way I can deal with it is to fight and keep fighting and keep coming back again and again. Oi, get off! We do that again. Get out! Get out! No, you get out of here. I've told you before. You know what he's like. Why don't you send him away? Stop now. I either stand up and fight or I go under. Yeah. I'll go under with it. That's it. And to go under with it means what? Going mad? I think just hopelessness. Yeah, this is real hopelessness. <laughs> Bedroom. So what's in here? Banners, placards, leaflets. You don't get a life outside of it. You just don't. You just become, you know, a whole life. I mean, are there any, are there any moments where you think you wish you didn't see the world in the way that you do? I wish I didn't. Yeah, I mean, do you have those moments? Yeah, right? yeah. Certain points when you really are under it, you know, you just think, I wish I didn't have this. I wish I didn't see the world in this way because it, it, you know, I wouldn't be under this kind of living under this kind of pressure. Most of the time, you just got to get on with it. But yeah, yeah, the odd moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mel told me that at the age of 22, he chose to have a vasectomy so he could dedicate his life to the animals. Keith Mann has invited me round to watch his video of the night he broke into the chicken farm. That's a rat, another one of a, one of many dead rats. I would go in there all day long just to rescue these birds and give them a better chance, give them a, give them a life back. But there are very, very few people who do this kind of thing, who do what you do, aren't there? That's unfortunate, I think. And even fewer who would, who would actually try to burn down places like this. Sad that, isn't it? I think it's sad. Why is that? I mean, do you accept that there's something different about you? Well, yeah, clearly. Um, you know, I can't sleep at night knowing that this is happening. What is it you're thinking about at night when you can't sleep? Well, I'm comfortable and cosy in my bed, and it does, it does bother me. It does bother me constantly that others aren't, you know. If I was in the position of an animal and, you know, I would expect and I would hope that somebody would be doing something for me. And whether they're actually thinking that, oh, I wish somebody had come through the roof with a balaclava or not, I don't know. But that is the right thing to do. I'm, I'm just aware, consciously aware that it's going on and I need to do something about it for my own sanity, if you like. Um, I, I've gone out of my way to make myself aware of all these issues and now I feel compelled. I feel it's my duty to do something to address them. And... And do you think you'd go mad if you couldn't? Um, well, I do get... I mean, I, I, I do get stressed if I'm not doing anything, if I'm not busy doing something um, to make a difference. Um, maybe I would. Activity is a relief from the torment. Just days after the closure of the guinea pig farm, Johnny Ablewhite is in the West Country to disrupt the annual badger cull. Throughout the night, they search for trapped badgers. So is it set? Yeah, totally. I thought that would be the one, you know. Normally, they will destroy the traps, causing criminal damage but not in front of the camera. So is that it then? You leave the trap like that? <laughs> <you>? <laughs> of course. Oh, for God's sake, Dave, this is getting ridiculous. During the night, 
Johnny told me of a recurrent dream he'd been having since the closure of New Church Farm. He'd be flying through the air with hundreds of guinea pigs. Compulsive activism has inevitable consequences. Sure. What are you doing here this time of night? What am I doing here? Yeah. Um, I'm filming. Right, why are you filming? Why am I filming? Yeah. Um, because I'm a documentary maker and I work for Channel 4. Oh, right, lovely. We're going to have to seize the camera as evidence. Right, evidence of what? Well, evidence of possible criminal damage. So can you pass me the tape or switch the camera off? Um, I'm re reluctant to do that. What are we going to do then, sir? So it's going to arrest you on suspicion of causing criminal damage. Right. Do you not have to say anything that may harm defence? Do you want to mention when questioned something you should try in court? Anything you do say may be given evidence. Sure. Okay, sir. Can you pass me the video now, please? We're all arrested and held in the cells for 18 hours. When we're released, Johnny goes straight back into the field. I visit him and the others in their digs the following morning. Um, so... <laughs> so you went straight out again last night? Of course. No, just stuff to put over my mouth. We've had an incredibly long sleep, haven't we? <laughs> I hadn't slept that much. Didn't you sleep, did you? Were you yeah. <laughs> sodomised? <laughs> the arrest itself invariably leads to nothing. So yeah, you just put your head down and worry about your friends. How hard they're working and how comfy these blankets are. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah, you get some sleep. You can't pretend it's a pleasant experience. Yeah, but pleasant, Jesus. Sure, It'd be better but... asking you how it was because you're like well, never I didn't, been I... in a British cell. Sure, I, well, I'd be, yeah, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't like it. I mean, I find it really unpleasant <coughs> experience. I mean, it is boring, but it's also degrading. Oh, really? You, you go for that whole humility thing? I don't go for the humility thing, it is. You know, if we can get to find out where the traps are, that's life or death. Mm. So what is a night in, in a cell compared to that? The arrest situation is meaningless. A conviction is meaningless. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't... It, it, you don't worry about it or think about it at all. Less than two weeks later, Johnny is again arrested over the grave robbery. He's been in prison ever since. Johnny Abelwhite, Kerry Whitburn and a third man pleaded guilty to conspiracy to blackmail. The charge included the grave robbery. A week before they were sentenced, the third defendant told the police where the body of Gladys Hammond was hidden. Last Thursday, the judge said the men were cold-blooded and had ruined people's lives. He sent them to prison for 12 years each. <laughs> 